Hello viewers, well I'm here in the south of Wales and I'm delighted to be joined by Karen Morgan who is the Child Abuse Correspondent for JW Survey and with her is her dad John Viney who is a former elder. Now the reason why Karen came to our attention was because her child abuse case was brought to light uh, a year or so ago and it became clear that she'd been abused as a child by her uncle who's now in jail. We're going to learn a little bit more about that but uh, Karen it's just nice to be with you finally because we work together and it's a pleasure to meet you too John because I've seen the television, there's been quite a lot of media exposure hasn't there of this story and, it, and John you were good enough to you know give your thoughts to the media as well. So, um, Karen, could you just give us um, a description of, of how this story came to light, what happened when you were little, uh, why it took so long for things to be dealt with? Uh, could you let us know br roughly what the story was? Well, I was abused for a couple of years by my uncle. He was a ministerial servant at mm. the start of the abuse and then he was made an elder. And what sort of ages were you at, at this? Twelve. Right. Um, he was then made an elder halfway through, I think, the abuse was taking place. Um, a couple of the elders knew, I don't think the whole body of elders knew, but a couple of them knew. Nothing was done about it, basically. Um, eventually I told my parents, but I didn't tell them all the details. Um, but then something happened to someone else in the congregation, and it was then that I was asked, would I have a judicial meeting and talk about what happened to me? So, firstly, I was taken to my auntie and uncle's house by my mum and dad and questioned in front of my auntie and my uncle. So, you were questioned in front of your abuser, basically? Yeah. And then I was taken to the Kingdom Hall. We had a meeting in the second school with me and my dad. There was two elders and my auntie and my uncle. So, again, in front of the abuser at the yeah. Kingdom Hall this time. Yeah. yeah, and I was asked about what had he done to me and I had to say, of course I was terrified because he was sitting right there, so I didn't say everything and I didn't want to talk about details, so I just gave like a rough outline of what had happened. Mm. Um, he was allowed to respond, my auntie was allowed to respond, then I had a meeting with four or five elders, I think it was, where I was by myself. I also had a meeting in the back of the district overseer's car with my dad and he was sitting in the front and I was telling the district, I had to tell the district overseer what had happened. It was all a bit surreal and I was going over and over and over it with all these different old men and obviously I was a teenage girl. Um, so after that he was disfellowship but he was disfellowship for lying and for, I think it was for, because he had admitted he was drunk when he raped his sister in the congregation so he was disfellowship for that. But not for the not rape? Not for what he had done, no. No. Not for the rape, not for the abuse, mm. because it couldn't be proved, because obviously mm. we didn't have two witnesses to sure. any of that. Sure. Um, so he used his fellowship, then he was still attending meetings and everything, and of course I didn't want to go to meetings anymore, I didn't want to see my auntie, I didn't want anything to do with the elders or anything like that, so and I left. You, so, and when you say you left... You, you were disfellowshipped because you met someone, did you? In Eventually, I met someone. Right. But first of all, I left. I stopped going to meetings. Oh, you just stopped going, mm. yeah. No one came to see I, I mean, I didn't have, like, elders coming to see me and trying to help me. I had no one came to see me, so no I support. left. Mm. Then I left my mum and dad's house when I was 17 and moved into a bed sit, and I was gone probably for about a year or so. Then I met um, the father of my children, and it was then that, when they found out I was seeing someone who wasn't a witness, then I was asked to have a judicial meeting, which I went to, um, and I was disfellowshipped after that. Then my uncle was reinstated three years later, um, and has been a Jehovah's Witness ever since. Even now he's a Jehovah's Witness? Yeah, he's still a Jehovah's Witness. Um, so then, about just over a year ago, I decided I wanted to go back to the police again and try and get something done about it, which is what I did. And this time we had the lady that was raped at the time, my cousin who was abused by him, and a lady that wasn't a Jehovah's Witness, but while he was disfellowshipped, he was actually taken to court for indecent assault against this lady that worked for him. Oh, right. So she came to court as well. Right. And the result was he got 14 years in prison. So he's done about a year of that now, but he's still a Jehovah's Witness in prison. 
he's um, doing Bible studies in prison, he's got elders visiting him from his old congregation, even though we've had no visit or nothing from anybody, no support, anything. Even my mum and my nan, who are still Jehovah's Witnesses, haven't had any... But they're anxious to take care of the spiritual welfare of the pedophile well, in their yeah, congregation. obviously. <laughs> and, and they were quick to leap on you once there was a whiff of... of um, oh yeah, they um, came looking for me. They came looking for mm. you, for simply for, you know, yeah. private yeah, intimate affairs with your boyfriend. But for a pedophile, well, you know, have other two witnesses and... Astonishing, I know, it's, it's mm. crazy. Mm. So, when, obviously I, I studied this case when it came to light. I didn't know you before uh, all of the media coverage. And um, one thing that I kind of really appreciate now that I'm a dad is how how harrowing this must be for the parent. Because mm. it's the, your worst nightmare as a parent that your child should succumb to a pedophile. What's your... What was your reflections looking back on this, John, and, and how, how are you able to process what happened to your daughter? Um, well, I've been a Jehovah's Witness, I had been, for about 55 years. Mm. So, um, the process of being a Jehovah's Witness has a profound effect on you. Yeah. And it has an effect on you as a father. Um, and to a degree, I think I'd have to be honest now and say that my children and my family didn't always come first. Right. Because of um, either congregation responsibilities or trying to be loyal to what I believed. On some occasions, I think I was not as robust as protecting my children as I could have been. Mm. I mean, I didn't deliberately not do that, but with hindsight, you look back and say, well, actually, um, you know, more, more effort could have been put into looking after them. Having said that, um, when Karen first approached me, when she was about 12 or 13, and said that she didn't like the way her Uncle Mark was kissing her, that is what I thought she meant, mm. that she didn't like the way he was kissing her. I thought it was more of perhaps the way he greeted her. When we used to go around there, he was uh, maybe too affectionate. And that was the level of my understanding. And I'm afraid the other anything else went completely over my head, mm. even though she did tell me even again that she didn't like the way her Uncle Mark was kissing her. Mm. Um, so I was somewhat naive, really, and perhaps also didn't want to think of anything else, although I actually don't believe at that time that I thought oh, something else might be going on. Mm. It was only when she was a teenager and was going through a difficult time, when she was first cutting her arms with some self-abuse, mm. that was the first time that the alarm bells went off and I thought, what on earth is going on here? Mm. And almost then, as a dad, you you have to drop whatever you've got, and mm. then you think, "Wow, I need to I need to pay attention to this." And um, was there an element because you you said we were talking about this before, and you said, "Well, the thing is, I really believed it was the organisation." And when you reached the stage when you you accepted that it was more than just you know kissing, when you accepted that stage, how did you respond then? Did you? Uh, were you horrified? Were you shocked? Did you think the organisation could deal with it? What was your response Well, then? I was horrified. Um, I don't know whether it's anything just to do with my particular makeup. Mm. Um, I didn't want to go around and punch, the, punch his lights out, right. Right. as some dads would. Yeah, yeah. I thought, we, we, we've got to deal with this like Christians. Right. That, that, that was my... Um, my attitude so we did arrange to go round in the Christian manner um, to confront him um, to put the accusations to him um, following that is when we then had to involve the congregation and it was done in a way that um, Jehovah's Witnesses handled matters like that you went through the elders there was never any point where you thought we need to go straight to the police. I was just going to ask you that. Um, Did it ever occur to you just to go to the police? It, 
I, I ask that question no, not to incriminate you, I, just to no, see no, what I, the... Men, I don't mm. mind you asking me any question. Mm. I cannot remember, right at the very beginning, mm. thinking about the police. Mm. I can't remember that. Because mm. um, that's how you're conditioned, do you think? Mm. Absolutely. That if that's why I didn't think it, mm. then it was because it wasn't on the agenda. I, I ask that as well because... You know, one of the excuses that the organisation's making at the moment is they say, well, we don't discourage parents yeah. from going to the police. Yeah. But I think this story is an, an important way of highlighting the fact that when you're a Jehovah's Witness parent, it's just, it's not something you intuitively do because you're raised in an environment where you don't take your brother to court, Jehovah's yeah. Organisation must clean itself and all those sorts of I, things. I, I mean, I do remember the letter we had back from the society, and this is mm. probably going to be sort of, um, I don't know, bursting the bubble slightly. I wish I'd kept the letter, mm. because I think, in certainly in this area of South Wales, I don't think Jehovah's Witnesses have dealt with anything like this. Mm. So You felt, you feel it was unprecedented? It was unprecedented, and so out of our depth. Mm. And yes, of course, at the back of your mind, not just as a dad, but also as a, a, a good family in the truth, you're thinking, oh, I hope no defamation of Jehovah's name is going to come out in all this. Mm. Um, that Those things are always in the back of your mind. Um, so whilst we didn't think about going to the police right at the very beginning, um, that was something that was suggested as we were going through the motions with it. Well, within... I wanted to, didn't I? I was adamant I was going to go to the police about it. I think that's because I remember always saying to you, I want to go to the police with it. Mm. So I think that's where that began. That's why. But see, even at that stage, my dad couldn't think, OK, let's just go to the police. My dad actually had to ask elders and then felt he had to write to the Bethel to say, oh, no, can we go to the police with this? You, you Which, of course, they, the, the Bethel wrote back and said, look, if that's what you want to do, you can do it. Yeah. You felt as though everything had to be green-lighted by I the think it's yeah, yeah. It is fair to say that the letter back from the society did say that that was an option. I mean, to be fair, they did but say... But they didn't that say that. you should do it? No. <clears throat> um, no, they said if we want to... Um, that's right. We can. Mm. Which um, is what they say we, now, isn't mm, it? They don't mm, discourage... I think I was... Um, I was more concerned that the process or procedure was handled properly mm. from within the yeah. Jehovah's organisation. Mm. Um, I wanted it dealt with mm. and it, it was completely unacceptable, but wanted it dealt with in, in the correct way. Mm. But because we were out of our depth, letters and phone calls were going backwards and forwards from the society. And I'm afraid to say that it almost developed into having two camps within the congregation. Uh, it suffice to say that in those days, there were about 17 elders. A lot of us were related to one another. A lot of us had children who were pioneers, ministerial servants. There were some other things going on within the congregation that were quite bad, immor immorality going on amongst people who should have known better and fathers who were elders who were trying to protect their children. Nepotism. So, so yeah. amongst this horrendous um, crime of child abuse, amongst mm. that, you had a group of elders that were also condoning or at least not doing anything about other things. Looking so, out for their own interests. Yeah. So it was a nightmare situation and mm. eventually uh, we had a seven-man committee come to the congregation here in Barry, mm. two district overseers, a circuit overseer and a four-man special committee who lived with the congregation for a week and um, to try to get to the bottom of what was going on. Yeah, we had another meeting with them. Oh, about yeah. that. We, we all had to go to Penarth Kingdom Hall then. It was... Um, in front of him again. It was quite. To discuss it. It was quite something. Eventually, they um, they removed several people. This special committee removed several people from being elders or from positions, but they didn't deal with the actual 
no. crime yeah. of the child abuse and then or the alleged and I'll say alleged then rape mm. and so it was only um, it was only really 20 20 25 years later last year yeah that really that was everything came to light yes. and of course when when that when it did come to light you, you gave it your full support unlike many of the elders who could have given information I think you were saying before mm. Mm. yeah well I was just going to say that that none of them came to the police at the time mm. and none of them came this time around mm. either mm. I did have a phone call from an elder who um, I don't know why but just before we were going to go to court an elder rang me and said they wanted to come around and like do a shepherding call and I haven't had a shepherding call ever mm. so I said yeah by all means come around because I've got I want to tell you about you know I've got a court case coming up and I want to tell you all about it and he was like oh well we're only going to come and see you if you're actually interested in coming back yeah. so I said oh I said, don't bother coming then, because I'm not coming back. <laughs> so that was it, they never came. Wow. Yeah, no. that, was, that was the most disappointing thing, was mm. to see the well, lack... you just don't get any support. The lack of support. None whatsoever. Mm. Uh, and which really makes me laugh when you look at some of the governing bodies' um, talks to the congregation and what's written about how they lovingly support not just child abuse victims, but their families. Yeah, you were and, saying about the latest video. And, you? and yeah. you'd have to say, actually, I th don't recognise that at all. Mm. Well, I the, would the, walk out of most of those meetings, cr I mean, in pieces, as you can imagine. And once that meeting was over, not a word was said to me about it, no mm. one mentioned it. So mm. I, we'd go to meetings, and there they all mm. were at the meetings. Mm. I'd go home, and I'd only hear about it if they wanted another meeting with me. It'd be all oh, the elders want to come and see you again tomorrow. Oh, all right, and then I talk about it again. But outside of that judicial arrangement, they never ever mentioned and it. And in the back of your mind, we we you, did you have some kind of idea that they might be in touch with the authorities? I'm just trying to get into as your child, mind as a child, as no. like a teenager. No. No. Right. I knew they wouldn't, which is why I know I kept saying I want to go to the police. Right. So it was a frustrating experience for you to be dragged through all these meetings when you know. You yeah, it was just wasn't. meeting after meeting after meeting. Um, and thinking, bringing things up to date with, because we recently had the, the Tony Morris JW broadcasting episode where he touched on child abuse. And he rolled out this new uh, K11 and Sophia video, which basically put the onus on children to be yeah. protecting themselves against child abuse. What, what were your thoughts on, on that? Well. <sighs> I mean, the message they're trying to give is mm -hmm. a good one. Mm -hmm. Children do have to be careful, but mm -hmm. the problem is, and especially amongst Jehovah's Witnesses, child abusers don't come along in like black cloaks and look really scary and say to children, "Oh, I want to They don't look like this. a child catcher off just no. pretty bang bang. All no, the they don't. Really. No. They look like ordinary, nice, friendly people yeah. who gain your trust over a year or so. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so it's not realistic. That's what I thought. No, no, and. It seems to completely miss the point of what child abuse is all about, which is the abuse of vulnerable people. Mm. And the message seems to be, uh, we're going to solve this problem by telling vulnerable people to be less vulnerable. Um, it seems to miss the point entirely of why it is that you know that predatory pedophiles are, are, are able to do what they yeah. do, which is take and, advantage of and children. And of course they pick children who maybe aren't going to go and tell their mum and dad. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure in the video you've got the child saying to the mum and dad or something, oh, they touched me somewhere that they should, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I was 12 when I told my mum and dad, and I wouldn't have been able to bring myself to say that. No, no. And I don't think there's many kids who would, mm. not to hold witness mm. children. No, it's, it's not something that's, in, you know, easy for most children to do, is it really? Um, no, it's not. Because it's so, so foreign to, to what children are mm. used to, isn't it? Um, one thing I, I was interested in knowing, uh, Karen, because when your story came to light, it was, it was quite new in a way because we'd only had the Candace Conti story in 2012. Before that, most child abuse um, cases seemed to settle out of court. So there was Candace Conti, and then there was a few other cases. We don't know what happened, whether they, how they were resolved. But then we had you, and the, it's, we seem to be thin on the ground with uh, abuse survivors coming forward. Has that been difficult for you? And would you encourage? other survivors of child sex abuse to come forward and tell their story? 
Yeah, coming forward um, wasn't difficult, and even going through the court process wasn't mm. difficult. Obviously, it was upset and it was really emotional, mm. but it wasn't difficult because it makes you feel empowered, mm. I think. And the one thing I would say, especially if it's Jehovah's Witnesses watching this yeah. who are abuse victims, yeah. is I would never, ever waste your time going to elders. The elders aren't police, they don't deal with crimes. No. You don't have to go to elders and say, this is what happened to me. Mm. You just go to the police. Mm. You wouldn't go to an elder if your home was burgled, so why would you go to an elder if you've had a sexual crime committed against you? You wouldn't. Mm. You don't mm. have to. Yeah. And John, what would be your message to parents of abuse victims? You'd, you must support them. You must yeah. believe them. You must start from the default position that they are telling the truth. Mm -hmm. And no matter how much you think it might defame God or his name or his organisation, mm -hmm. um, if you believe in God, and I do, yeah. I think he's big enough to look after himself. Yeah. Your children need your support yeah. and every effort that you should give. Mm -hmm. That's quite right. Well, I'm really... Um, really delighted to be able to meet you both in the flesh as I say we meet we work together quite a lot anyway and um, I, I, I also really admire the fact that you um, st effectively stood down as an elder so you could walk Karen down the aisle I found that really oh, yeah, that was a really touching story I don't think, you, I don't think he had any uh, choice <laughs> what? he you got into down. so much trouble <laughs> It was it was worth it, believe yeah. me. It was yeah. worth it. Did I tell you about my very quickly about my mum getting into trouble with the elders because no. she brought in? You know, we did a piece of the new. Oh books. yeah, she, she she brought because in because they asked her, would you just bring in cups of tea at the end? She didn't say it a word. She just had to bring in cups of tea, mm. and she didn't want to do it. And we were like, go on, do it, do it. It looks nice. And it was just just to she's explain. She's literally in the background. This is this is just because the production crew would like to see some kind of activity. Yeah. is it? Yeah. They wanted yeah. to close it up with a nice scene of Fam us having a family a scene yeah yeah but because she did that mm -hmm. she then had two elders approach her and say oh where do your loyalties lie do they lie with Jehovah or do they lie with your daughter and my mum was just like and that's because she brought in a cup of tea and, and meanwhile they're making sure that Mark Sewell has his regular shepherding yeah. visits at and it's not prison. astonishing absolutely astonishing so ladies and gentlemen this is the reality of child abuse and the mishandling of child abuse in the organisation and I'm really grateful to you Karen for shining a light on it and to you John for I think making some really admirable statements as well about um, the things that you regret and the things that you would do differently and you know and your words of encouragement to other other mm. parents so thank you very much to both of you. Thank you. I'll shake your thank hand. you. <laughs> Thanks thank John. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs>